As most people know, Washington had his eye on the West from his young age. He personally went out three different times to uh, fight the French in the area around Pittsburgh. After the revolution, he made a trip and went down the Ohio River, checking out the land. What was it like? He didn't see the America in his vision as being just the Atlantic front. He was always looking west. By 1760, Americans are already moving west of the Alleghenies. Washington realizes these numbers will grow, so he helps create the Potomac Company. It hopes to connect the eastern seaboard with the resource-rich Ohio Valley by improving navigation along the Potomac River. And then, of course, if that ever happens, it's all going to be coming out of the port of Alexandria, which is just down the road from Mount Vernon. So it's a win-win. It's good for the country, it's good for Virginia, and it's good for Mount Vernon. The Potomac Company fails as a business venture, in part because of daunting engineering challenges along the route. But Washington's vision of a nation stretching across the continent never diminishes. He advocates putting the nation's capital on the banks of the Potomac, convinced it will be a primary route westward. And in 1792, Washington welcomes Kentucky and then Tennessee into the Union, the first states beyond the Allegheny Mountains. All of his life, if you imagine him standing at Mount Vernon and looking to what he saw as the future, he was facing west. He saw it, he believed it, he lived it. He was not facing east toward Europe. He was a man of America. 